In any movie universe, there are sure to be questions. If you let yourself fall into a fictional world, it's a magical and mysterious place where the unthinkable actually happens. It's intriguing to consider every small detail to form a three-dimensional view of a non-real reality, much like adding puzzle pieces to form a much larger picture. And there's nothing like the Jeepers Creepers universe for mystery. In the Jeepers world, there's an unlimited amount of information and depth, and every discovery leads to three new things to discover. If you enjoy diving into fictional universes, don't nobody go nowhere. Okay, today we have three terrorizing theories about the Jeepers Creepers universe that rarely get discussed. These are questions and thoughts that came from you guys, our amazing Beating You family. Let's give them a virtual round of applause while we take a look at three terrorizing theories surrounding the Jeepers Creepers universe. Alright, 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 hold it down. You know what I just thought of? Kenny and Darla. That they had to go looking for her head. That they never found them. They only found the car. No, no, no. They never found her head. Terrorizing theory number one. Kenny and Darla. Almost everyone is familiar with Kenny and Darla. We were recently asked a really good question that deserves some consideration. At Lynette Patrice 2600 recently asked, If Darla was taken and ended up in the Creepers action figure collection, how did anyone know that she lost her head? This is a great question, and what it really boils down to is how did the folklore get started? Let's look at what we know for sure and form a plausible theory. He wouldn't say what was happening. Mom, just get the horses! He must have touched that thing, and that was why he was so angry and frightened. We know that Kenny and Darla were on their way to the prom in 1978 when the creeper came down and killed them both. Kenny Brandon had recently found the creeper's hand falling from the moonlit sky and he took it home. And that's probably the reason they were both killed. 23 years later, as they were driving home for spring break, Trish and Derry were arguing that they never found the bodies or that they never found her head. A little later, Derry found out firsthand that the story of Kenny and Darla was true and that she did lose her head. He found them stitched together, holding hands for eternity in the Creeper's basement art exhibit. But how did the rumors get out about this tragedy and what really happened? There's a scenario that might tell us exactly how this happened. The Creeper parked a short distance away and hunted as it usually does. It came across Kenny and Darla out on the road and attacked their car. It took Kenny back to its truck while it left Darla at the scene of the slaughter, intending to come back for her. While the Creeper was gone, a passerby came upon the wreckage and saw Darla and drove off to report the incident to the authorities. Remember, 1978, no cell phones. After a short time, the Creeper returned for Darla and took her to his truck also. And remember, evidence would have indicated that there was a missing driver as well. So that would have started the folklore about the accident on the East Nine in 1978 where no bodies were ever found. But that wouldn't have explained the missing head folklore surrounding this famous wreckage. As one version of the story goes, they never found her head. How could this part of the campfire story find its place into the community? It's clear from the basement scene that she did lose her head. How would this story get out? Do you know? That's easy. It means her head was removed at the scene of the attack. She wouldn't have lost her head after they were already dead. There'd be no point. No, Darla lost her life when she lost her head, and it happened with a single swing of an ancient battle axe. Kenny got to watch this happen at the scene of the attack, and his fear was maximized. He was punished for taking the creeper's hand, and a cautionary tale was born. Is this valid? What do you think? Terrorizing theory number two, the first truck attack. Mr. Polly, Star Trek, deep guy. Turns out you're a twin. Jesus. Why didn't the creeper take Derry during the first truck attack? Trish and Derry were returning home for spring break when they were attacked by the creeper's rusted and hideous sidekick, Be Eating You. During this attack, they weren't touched at all. The truck came up behind them, swerved back and forth, and yelled automotive profanities at them with its horn. The Jenners went into a panic, and the truck went around them and continued on in its morbid trajectory. Trish and Derry were completely frightened, but the question is, if the Creeper smelled Derry's fear, why didn't it take him then? There are any number of possibilities. Some believe Derry wasn't terrified enough. We aren't sure there's a specific threshold that someone's fear must cross in order to become a victim, but it's a theory. Another theory surfaced courtesy of At Mechanison. We all know the Creeper's truck moves without the Creeper in the driver's seat. What if the Creeper's truck attacked the Jenners without the Creeper at the wheel? 
the creeper could have flown to his secret church basement hideout with a victim in his grasp and called for his truck to meet him there. Now this theory is way outside the lines, but it's interesting and it would explain some things. It would explain why two truck attacks were very different in style, meaning why didn't it ram them the first time to scare them? The two truck attacks were clearly very different. It would explain why the creeper's truck needs limousine tint on its windows. And most importantly, it would explain why Derry wasn't taken during the first attack. They were afraid, and that was enough. As they continued on their way past the old church, they ran across the creeper who stared them down and took in the beautiful aroma of their fear, the fear that his truck had just caused. Now this one's pretty far reaching, but we like it. I guess with this we'll ask you, is it possible? What do you think? Terrorizing theory number three, the creeper's art. The creeper's been known to be somewhat of an art collector. Now it may not be art that we would collect, but it does seem to be important to the creeper. He's a human body collector and he displays his collection on the walls and ceilings of his hideouts. It would also come as no surprise to fans that he's got a pretty big collection of weapons. We're pretty confident that we've only seen a small portion of the weapons he actually has. It's been hunting for thousands of years, and over the course of that time, it would be easy to accumulate a massive collection, and he very rarely or maybe never uses any sort of firearms. This is a wild idea that comes to us from at underscore Yohasakura underscore. But let's back up just a little. When the Bannon High basketball team was returning from their tournament, Minxie fell into a dream. There she met Derry Jenner, who took her on a rancid tour, including many remains and a look at his face after the creeper had taken what yes. it wanted. As they walked, viewers assumed they were getting information about the Creeper's past battles and victories. What if we told you there may be more to it than that? Remember, past victims of the Creeper are a part of it, and it's a part of them. Not only that, but the Creeper seems to have a very complicated relationship with the spiritual realm. It would have to if its victims are somehow connected with it in the afterlife. Because the victims are deceased, the connection must be spiritual. What if Mingxi was getting a tour of an other dimensional art exhibit? An exhibit that exists in a spiritual gallery where the disembodied can visit and take tours. We know that the Creeper collects physical objects, but we also know it collects spiritual ones. I'm a part of it, and it's a part of me. Every victim the Creeper's ever killed is a part of it. That's quite a collection. If it enjoys putting things on display, it only makes sense that it would have a display in the spiritual world also where displays are moving and changing, and like any good collection, they grow larger as things are added. What do you think? Does the creeper have some sort of online display, so to speak? Whatever it is, it's a creepy thought. Thanks for the submission. When the weather very important to gloomy, you gotta be sunny to me. When your eyes look into mine, creepers, creepers, where'd you get those creepers? Keep your theories coming. This Jeepers family that's come together is incredible, full of amazing thoughts. Do you have a theory about the Jeepers universe? Leave it in the comments and we may just highlight your theory on this channel as content. Links to today's contributors are in the description. Thank you guys for watching today. Sub up, join the family, share the content. Until next time, we'll see you.